Macroeconomic policy. Governments and other policymakers have at their disposal a wide array of individual policies to help them achieve their objectives, which include maintaining a stable price level, which means keeping the rate of inflation within certain limits, typically around 2% per year in most countries. Achieving full employment, typically around 4% unemployment. This means that some level of unemployment is accepted as inevitable, given that people will be changing jobs and some will be unemployed as a result of business failures. Maintaining stable and sustainable growth levels, which typically means growing at a level which does not exhaust scarce resources or drive up the prices of resources. A common benchmark for stable growth is for GDP to increase at or just above the long-term trend rate for an economy and to achieve a balance of payments with the rest of the world. In addition to these core objectives, policymakers can set targets to control pollution and other negative externalities and to achieve greater equity through reduction in inequality and poverty. In recent years, the control and management of public finances is seen as an increasingly important objective, especially following the financial crash of 2008 to 2010. To achieve these objectives, policymakers can select the policy tools they expect will help them best achieve the chosen objective. Policies can be put into one of two main categories, those that influence demand and those that influence supply commonly called demand-side and supply-side policy. On the demand side, we have fiscal and monetary policy. While fiscal policy uses taxation, public spending or borrowing to achieve changes in aggregate demand, monetary policy attempts to influence aggregate demand by expanding or contracting economic activity through the regulation of the supply of or the demand for money in a modern economy, fiscal policy is the responsibility of government, while monetary policy is the responsibility of the central bank. Fiscal and monetary policy can be used to target any policy objective, although typically, monetary policy is given over to the pursuit of a stable price level. Let's look at these. Fiscal policy attempts to alter aggregate demand through changes in taxes, government spending, or borrowing. Discretionary fiscal policy means deliberate policy changes, usually in an annual budget, while automatic stabilizers use fiscal drag and fiscal boost to regulate the business cycle automatically. Fiscal drag means that progressive taxes and welfare benefits combine to slow an economy down if it is growing too quickly. Fiscal boost stimulates the economy automatically by using progressive taxes and benefits to pump money back into an economy when it is slowing down. Monetary policy involves changing either the price of money, its interest rate, or the quantity of money. The monetary transmission mechanism shows how interest rates work their way through the economy, affecting asset prices, confidence, exchange rates, and finally onto the price level. With the era of very low interest rates, central banks have turned to quantitative easing, which pumps money directly into the economy through a central bank purchasing financial assets. Noted that tax policy can be used as a supply side tool, especially to encourage work and enterprise. Supply side policies are often categorized in terms of whether they try to enhance the workings of the free market economy, such as by deregulation and removing the constraints imposed by government or whether they involve more intervention by government, such as increased spending on education and healthcare and on infrastructure. In terms of specific supply-side policies, reducing marginal tax rates can achieve an incentive effect as it can encourage people to work. The Laffer curve can help illustrate this effect. The rate of tax may encourage or discourage people to work. At tax rates of 0 and 100%, the government gets no tax revenue. At a rate of 100%, no one will work and again, the government gets no revenue. Between 0 and 100%, the government gains more and then less revenue. So why is this? According to the Laffer curve, a disincentive effect will kick in, beyond T tax rate caused by workers substituting leisure for work.
In the example, increasing tax rates from 50 to 70% causes revenue to fall from $80 billion to $70 billion. So how useful is the Laffer curve as a policy tool? Statistical models may help determine if a tax rate creates a disincentive effect. For example, with an income tax rate of 60% and government revenue of $77 billion at point Z, a policy to reduce tax to 50% might reasonably expect revenue to rise to $80 billion at point T. If the actual gradient is for curve 2, not curve 1, then revenues may fall to point X with no disincentive at Z. So, trying to set tax rates based on a theoretical Laffer curve is extremely difficult. Improving labour productivity is also seen as a key supply side objective. Productivity is measured either as output per worker or output per hour worked. Three factors stand out as key areas for an economy to improve. Firstly, improving the level of education and skill of the workforce. Given that education is a merit good, it is unlikely that the free market will supply a sufficient quantity of education, hence the significance of state involvement. Secondly, improving the flexibility of labour to be able to adapt to changes in the demand for labour. Again, education can help this, as can incentives to retrain and subsidies and grants to firm to encourage in training. Labour mobility is a key component of flexibility. When labour is geographically immobile, government may subsidise public transport or provide relocation assistance. In the case of occupational immobility, Improving education and skills and providing better information to job seekers can help. Reducing barriers to entry into the labour market can also help improve mobility and flexibility, such as encouraging more part-time work. Thirdly, industrial and technology policy can help encourage an economy to improve the efficiency and competitiveness of its industries. Finally, improvements in a country's infrastructure, including its transport and communications network, can help improve factor productivity. It should be noted that objectives may be in conflict with each other, such as the inflation-unemployment conflict as identified in the Phillips curve. 